Welcome to the Crypto Campfire. They're two wild and crazy guys, Mitch and the Professor, featuring special guest, Truth Raider. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Crypto Campfire Podcast. This is the Professor. And Mitch. And today we've got Truth Raider on the show. But before we start talking to Truth, let's take a look at the crypto news from the Crypto Gym. Thanks, Professor. Hello, Crypto Campfire listeners, and welcome to the Cryptocurrency News in the Flash with the Crypto Gent. Walmart is looking to rival Facebook's Libra, according to a patent filed earlier this week. Grayscale to start using Coinbase's custody services, and China's central banks call for speeding up R&D state-backed digital currency. That's the Cryptocurrency News in a Flash with the Crypto Gent, and it's back to you, Professor. Thanks a lot, Crypto Gent. So, Mitch, what do you think about uh, back-to-back podcast days on a weekend? Oh, I love it. <laughs> Is it get better? I love it. <laughs> a, little, a little awkward today. I'm at, my, uh, I'm at my friend's house working on his house, and, you know, it was something that we needed to get done before I left for um, St. Louis. So I, I said, well, why don't I come by, and I'll just do my podcast right from, right from your kitchen. So nice. here I am. Podcast yeah. from a friend's kitchen. Right on. Awesome. That's dedication, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm at, I'm at my parents' house actually right now. Believe it or not, we're uh, we took the kids down to visit grandma and grandpa and take them to the fair. So uh, one thing I wanted to say, I thought it was interesting. So last night you sent me a picture of your fortune from a fortune cookie, and mm-hmm. it was like the most ridiculous, crazy luck for for that fortune that, that it just fit everything that was going on in your life so much right now. And it did. No, I shit you not. Two hours after that, I was at the fair when you sent me that. Two hours after that, uh, my wife and I had gone back to the fair without the kids. We were sitting down, and the lady walks over from Montana Lottery and hands me a lotto ticket. And she says, We accidentally printed two of these, and we can't keep it. And we're closing down for the night, so it's all yours. <laughs> so, what do you think? You know, I'm a millionaire? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, that's crazy. Maybe maybe some luck will happen and we'll uh, kick this world tour off a little early. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Oh, my but, goodness. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward today. Uh, w- w- this is going to be a good conversation. Uh, Truth Raider, welcome to the show. First off, how's your day going? Hey, doing good, uh, Mitch and Professor. How are you guys doing? Good. good. Doing That's fabulous. Good. Doing fabulous. So uh, let's get started by taking a look at how you got into the crypto space. I know you're a self-proclaimed Bitcoin maximalist, and we'll get there. Uh, we, we, we like to talk shit coins a lot, so um, forgive us. But <laughs> how, how did you come into the crypto space? How did you hear about Bitcoin in the first place? So I think uh, I didn't actually physically buy any till 2017, but uh, I've been you know, kind of in that area for a long time. So following the rise of you guys remember like BitTorrent, Frostwire, LimeWire, oh, yeah. Napster, Napster, Man, the LimeWire, old Napster. the old school, <laughs> the old school peer-to-peer networks from back in the day. Oh yeah. From the early early two thousands. And I, I so I've kind of been in that like uh mindset <laughs> before Bit, uh, Bitcoin launched in two thousand nine. Uh-huh. So it was kind of a na- it was a natural like progression, I guess. You know? You know, I suppose that that is really a natural progression actually from you know, it's just decentralized sharing of data. You know, what with Bitcoin is just a type of data. It's uh, no different. So it's funny because, I mean, I was really heavy into Napster and LimeWire and all that stuff. I was in high school at the time, middle school, actually, when Napster was was big. But I did a whole lot of that stuff. And I, and then I just never transitioned into Bitcoin. I, I heard about it a little bit in 2008. No, 2009, excuse me. Uh, looked it up, dismissed it immediately. Wish I hadn't done that. And uh you know, here we are, and I never really thought too much about the uh, similarities between P2P file sharing and and crypto until I started looking into content distribution platforms and things like that somewhat recently. But uh, th- there's a lot of a lot of crossovers and a lot of potential there that that spawned from that P2P file sharing industry, and here we are. So it's kind of exciting to see where this goes forward. Yeah, and I, I think for me. Um... Like I, I spent a lot of time surfing the, the deep web, the dark web, and, and, and I've seen Bitcoin all over the place. 
but it's always been like a silk road like type of thing where you buy goods and services on the deep web and dark web but i never bought anything off of it off of the that you know the dark net but um so it never really appealed to me personally because like i didn't buy any of the type of shit you would need to buy from there you know like right. i was i wasn't buying pot so like I, I imagine if in 2000 i think a lot of people got rich on accident you know because like they were buying and selling weed <laughs> you know <laughs> right they had bitcoin uh, for trading drugs <laughs> yeah just happened no, to seriously, like yeah the silk road like one of the biggest things for they were selling on the dark web was was pot you know and people were transacting in bitcoin because they didn't want to keep a record of fiat so back in the day people probably made a lot of money on accident to be honest mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> you know i can't imagine how I many agree. people got rich on accident off of bitcoin you know people that like like you say that just had it because they were using it for whatever and and not as an investment or people that found out about it early thought it was a thing that they wanted to play with and they got some they mined some whatever forgot about it again and then you know november 2017 it's twenty thousand dollars and of course everybody's scrambling like you know i had a bitcoin wallet back in 2010 uh where the fuck did it go oh yeah i sent it to the dump shit <laughs> <laughs> i spent it all yeah, well, the, wasn't there was that was a story right somebody had like five thousand or ten thousand or something like that yeah he, i think it was like it was a hard drive or some shit. Yeah, right? it was on it was on his hard drive. It was an old wallet that was, you know, just a full note on his hard drive and he he threw the whole computer away, I guess. And I know there was some massive attempts of him trying to get the dump to help him locate the hard drive and and I mean I think your efforts are are uh better spent at this point by the time you figure out how much it would cost to dig through an entire landfill to find a single hard drive that's probably totally corroded and useless. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't that suck? Yeah. The feeling of being a you millionaire know, but not having access to it anymore. It's it would suck, man. But like you remember that everybody's complaining about this, uh or not complaining, but talking shit about the Bitcoin pizza guy, right? Right. I watched this, yeah. the CNBC interview where he transferred ten thousand Bitcoin. But here's yeah, the thing. Did, did you notice his house? The yeah. dude's he's, he's, he's fine. He's rich. It wasn't his only 10,000 Bitcoins. <laughs> yeah, that that 10,000 was nothing to that guy. I guarantee it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's one, it, was, it was interesting watching that interview, too, because he, you know, whether it's because of the fact that it wasn't his only 10,000 Bitcoins or whatever, he was so happy to even be interviewed. And he wasn't, he wasn't like, yeah, it was the worst thing I ever did. And they kept trying to, like, weasel that out of him. But it was interesting seeing that, that contrast of how, you know, like, like, like we're doing right now, we're trying to focus on the concept of adoption and usage of cryptocurrencies and, and actually using them to purchase things or uh, whatever the particular use case of that token or coin may be. And, and that guy did exactly that. He, he used it for fair market value and, and bought something that he wanted and, and is actually using the, the product or using the, yeah wh whatever it is. And, and like, that's what you got to do. You got to use the shit or it's just going to die. So that, that as much as it sucks sometimes to sell your Bitcoin, whether it's for pizza or anything else, you got to use it or what's the point? I agree, man. So, so question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Oh, I mean, I know you guys, uh, I know it says, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm all, all in on Bitcoin, obviously, but um, obviously I trade all coins because I, I, I like, uh, I look at it Making like this. money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, obviously, obviously. But, but the way I look at it, my version of Bitcoin maximalism is this. I feel Bitcoin will always be the supreme um, crypto. It's just going to, it just will be. It may not be the highest price one, but it'll be the core for the entire uh, industry. However, I think it's going to be around for a long time. I, I a lot of people think it's going to be replaced and something better will come out. And I, I'm a person. My version of maximalism. I don't think it will be replaced. I really don't. I think it's going to be stronger every year based on new products that come out to strengthen it. How I look at altcoins is like this. I look at altcoins like a typical company, right? So, who's going to be the next Apple company? Who's going to be the next Microsoft? Who's going to be the next Oracle? That's kind of how I see altcoins, you know, that I don't compare the two, unlike some people try to do. And that's my version of Bitcoin maximalism. You know, it's more rational, I would say. And I would tend to agree with that. Absolutely. I, I mean, you know, Bitcoin is the core foundation of what started 
this thing we call cryptocurrencies. I mean, if it wasn't for the code of Bitcoin and the blockchain on the blockchain, would we have ever really evolved to this? Who knows? That sparked so much thought and so much um, what do you creativity in the in the space by it actually becoming that it 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 was just destined and the fact that it was the first one and the fact that it was the base code i mean yeah i don't think i don't think it'll ever like go away for sure it's going to be it's going to continue to be a store of value um are there going to be things that come along that make it faster absolutely there already are Are the things that are going to make it more efficient less expensive yeah absolutely but that's okay you know just because something's faster doesn't make the other one obsolete you can keep building on top of it you know you can always add extra layers like things like the lightning network and stuff like that to improve on the existing tech as well. So it's not like Bitcoin has to remain stagnant as it is either. So that, that's the thing that a lot of people do forget about or just don't think about is that it doesn't have to live exactly as it is right now. Well, there's so. the other the argument to the speed. Um, there, There's ways to make Bitcoin faster and, and I've tested them out. I mean, I've, uh, I've tested lightning out and it moves quick. I've tested out there's some limitations right now to lightning. Um, liquid mm -hmm. from Blockstream is another way to increase speed. Um, using side chains, there's ways to increase speed. There's all kinds of ways. The, the downside right now to Bitcoin um, speed is with lightning and other things is you have to have Bitcoin available to, to, to make it move quick. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, we're still in the infancy of Bitcoin where it only moves, I can't even know what the TPS is. It's probably what, seven to 10 transactions per second. It's nothing. Yeah, it's to sub, sub 10 for sure. Yeah, sub, sub, sub 10 or whatever. And then you've got Visa that's doing almost 2,000 a day. Or, or tra the TPS is 2,000, I think, right. transactions per second. So well, yeah. that's kind of like people say, unless you can do like Visa or MasterCard or American Express, where it's two, 3,000, 4,000, whatever the number is, you're not really it's not the use case and scalability is not there. That's the argument. Um, and that's where I think lightning, you know, maybe not in its current form, but five years from now, it may be perfected, you know? So I don't know. Well, and there's a careful balance too. I mean, when you're, when you're building a cryptocurrency, you, you have a, a, a trade-off of you've got security and you have speed and you have transaction costs. You know, you can't have it all in one. I agree. But I will say, I'm, I'm glad that you kind of clarified your maximalist stance, uh, because I will admit that when I see Bitcoin maximalist, the first thing I think of is like tone base, right? Like Bitcoin is Bitcoin and there's nothing else and everything else is a shit coin and it's all shit. It's all a scam. It's all going to zero, you know, like except Bitcoin. So that's that's my first perception of that. Song. Yeah, so, dude, it's like uh, like I said, I think that there's Bitcoin and there's companies. That's how I look at it. Like Bitcoin is not a company. There is Bitcoin, and there are corporations and companies, and and uh, and the the altcoins that that create companies and create industries and create uh, products. It's like creating a new co uh, concept. So, like for example, the whatever blockchain comes up with a, a really solid artificial intelligence blockchain that handles data that's secure and that's not shared with everybody, like Facebook and Google does. That will be a successful blockchain. I won't discredit it because I love Bitcoin. You know what I mean? It would be irrational. So that's kind of how I, you know. Um, and, and Bitcoin, There's a lot of those people that. Most may disagree with me and may attack me for what I just said, but I don't care. That's how I see it. I see there's Bitcoin <laughs> and there are companies that are succeeding using blockchain technology. That's how I look at it. Well, yeah, and I think it's a really logical way to look at it too, because even if you forget about Bitcoin and just look only at some of the altcoins, you have people that, for, let's just say, for example, they love XRP, but they really hate Ethereum. Be, and, but they, they use it because, well, XRP is a standard, so fuck Ethereum. It's like, well, they're totally different use cases. So um, explain to me how that matters. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're not, Ethereum isn't uh, competing with, with XRP. It's just not, it's not a competitor. So why dismiss it because you're a fan of one versus the other? So. I think a lot of that just has to do with the mentality of the individual or not. I, I don't want to say mentality because that sounds mean. You know, I, I, I just think it has to do with the limited knowledge or the fact that people get into a community, they get into a project and it, that project involves them and it consumes them to a point where 
you know, they, they almost feel like they have to be exclusive. And I don't think there's such a thing as exclusive, you know, to be exclusive in this space. Everybody says, oh, well, you're a Litecoin guy. No, I'm a crypto guy. You know, I'm, I'm not all about Bitcoin. I'm not all about Litecoin. I'm about all of it. Absolutely. Well, like we say, blockchain is a data structure, right? It's not, exactly. it's not one thing. It's just a data structure. So you can't really like be against other uses of this data structure just because you like one. So it's, it is what it is. It's funny though. So truth, I, I was kind of curious, what do you do outside of crypto? If you don't mind. Right now I'm mainly doing, uh, I'm working with uh, conventions right now. That's kind of my main play right now. I'm working with Malta's convention. There's one in Istanbul. I'm working one in uh, in uh, Pittsburgh. Basically, just do like marketing and stuff. I do like social media for them. Awesome. That's pretty much. Yeah. So any, any I, particular I'm kind ones of, that you're. The big well, in November I'm going to Malta for that one, uh, Malta Blockchain Summit, um, and then uh, February I'll go to Istanbul for the Istanbul one. But my I can talk about the cryptos, the altcoin blockchains that I'm working with too. I'm working with a few as well. One of the ones that I really like that I'm working with is called uh, Virtual Rehab. It's a uh, artificial intelligence and a virtual reality company. Oh, nice. And so, yeah, I, I try to stick to, like, if you look at the website, truthreader.com, you see the people I work with, I like to see if they have a product. That's kind of like, because do you remember last year, remember all the companies would just have like these lofty dreams and, and visions? Oh, yeah. You know, like, and it was, it was kind of like the dreamer market. In 2018, everybody has a dream, but they don't have a product. So I kind of try to stick to the ones that actually are offering something, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, I mean, that's a really good point. Like the, the crypto last year and even before that a little bit, 2016 to 2018 range was like the, the first year of Kickstarter. <laughs> you know, like everybody had this amazing thing that they were going to implement. And everybody rushed to it because they're like, wow, this is incredible. I can't believe this is happening. We've got to invest in this. They're going to build this. But then, you know, a lot of them figured, well, once we start getting these ICO funds and we have $50 million, we're definitely going to be able to make this work. And then, of course, a lot of them couldn't do that because money isn't everything when it comes to running a business. But anyway, I, <laughs> we're yeah. Yeah. If, you look, if you looked at like... Uh... Uh, so like when I was in Malta, I went to the startup pitch, right? And I'm watching all these companies pitch and I'm talking to people. They're trying to convince me to work with them. And like, I, I'll never forget this for the rest of the time I do Bitcoin and crypto. This guy comes up to me. He's in his mid thirties like me. And he goes, hey, man, uh, we're looking for social media support. I've got this new uh, token we got coming out on Ethereum and it's called uh, the friendship chain. And it's based on proof of friendship. And like he gave me this five minute spiel and trying to explain to me what proof of friendship was. And I was just looking at him like, you don't have a product. All you, you, you literally just pitched like, hey, my chain is based on being friends with people. I was like, that's not good. Whatever, guy. I'm pretty sure they disappeared. <laughs> but, but that's the kind of market 2018 was. People just had these random fucking ideas. Like yeah. if, if he would have told me, if he said to me, hey, proof of friendship, this is our friendship chain. We've got 200,000 or 50,000 members already. That's a different argument because you're, because then you're pitching your uh, user base, you know? So then I would have taken him seriously, but it was just a, it was a vision, <laughs> you know? Exactly. So where did the, where did the name Truth Raider come from? What, what sparked that for you? I think it's just like, I, I was, you know how when you're going online, you're looking for websites and trying to find a, like it used to be easy to make websites the names mm -hmm. because there was there were so many websites available. So I was looking for something that was original that was available, basically. So it's a okay. mixture of like like I like Tomb Raider, the video game. When I yeah. was growing, a little, a little when I was a kid, I played Tomb Raider religiously on my computer. Um, before yeah. it even hit, before it even got on the PlayStation, I played it on the computer. So. It, that kind of just stuck in my head. I was like, hey, you know, I throw a couple things together. It's, it kind of sounds the same. There you go. You know, right on. So, what's your what's your views on spreading the adoption of cryptocurrency? What do you? I mean, I don't know what your you know presence is that much. I mean, I've seen you some of your stuff on Twitter, but what do you watch on Twitter? Who do you follow? And do you see the the positive things that are happening in the space when it comes to spreading the adoption of it? 
So I told, like I said before, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big Bitcoin guy, guy obviously. So uh, Blockstream is probably my favorite. Lightning Labs and Blockstream are probably my two favorite companies um, okay. right now, because I feel like, I feel like the piece that we're missing is we're obviously missing the uh, institutional money. It's not coming in yet, but we're missing the industrial side of uh, crypto. You know, and, and I think companies like Blockstream are bringing the industrial side. They just opened like one of the largest Bitcoin mines in, uh, Can in Canada and nobody even knew they were building it. It's going to be one of the largest in the world. It can hold like a, a couple hundred thousand ASICs miners or something. I mean, it's, it's, it's massive, <laughs> massive mine. Um, and they're also they've got Fidelity. That's that's one of their clients, Fidelity Investments. So. Stuff like that gets me interested or gets me excited because you, you actually see adoption coming because right now we don't see a lot of those stories. Um, and so that's kind of the people I follow is the people that are building stuff. I'm not really, I don't really care about the influencers okay. as much. I care about okay. the people building the infrastructure. Sure. So you don't, you don't really have anything, you don't have any interest or any um, desire in the, you know, spreading it around to the layman, so to speak, or, or bringing, you know, new people into the space um, from that standpoint then? No, I do. But from more of, on that side of the house, it's more of a convention deal. Like, so like sure. I said, I work with conventions. So, so, but I think that's not going to get us there. You know, what's going to get us there is when, is one of us three, we wake up in the morning and our investment broker says, hey, why don't you have any, like, you know, that that's, that's what's going to, that's how you're going to get mass adoption. <laughs> it's going to be the industrial and the uh, the uh, industry side of of things that brings adoption. Uh -huh. And and so the people that are building the infrastructure um, are going to convince. They're the ones that are going to convince the industries to convince the consumer us to actually adopt crypto. It's not. It's like the smartphone. Did you wake up one day and say, "I need a smartphone"? You didn't. It was pushed on you. No, but I think what it was was seeing all the other people with smartphones. That's my point. It wasn't, no, it wasn't saying, the work that, that Samsung did. It wasn't the work that uh, Nokia did. It was, it was the fact that you seen somebody with that, with that phone and you went, wow, that thing's pretty kick-ass. Right? Yeah, but the, reason you, the, re the reason we thought that was because, one, somebody invented the smartphone, Apple, and two, the cell phone companies and the computer companies peddled the smartphone on us. So right now, my point is, I agree with what you're saying. You know, we saw it, it was shiny, it was new, it was amazing, right? But that's not the reason that we got adoption. We got adoption because the industry, Verizon, Apple, um, you know, all these, Samsung, they peddled it to the consumer. So what my point is, until we can convince large companies that they need to sell Bitcoin and crypto-based products, until that convincing happens, it's just going to be the three of us talking about Bitcoin for the next 10 years. That's what I'm saying. Well, and I think, and I think the flip side of that though, I think the flip side of that is, is the, um, the merchant side of it, having merchants that accept it for, for payment. Yes. And, you know, I think there's two sides to that and you're right. I'm not saying that there's uh, something wrong with what you're saying. I'm, that is a big part of it. But I think the other part of it too is the merchant side and the fact that people when people see that this is an actual currency, that it's a form of payment of something, yeah, the tech's going to continue to evolve. And the big companies and the, you know, like uh, UPS will be using blockchain technologies for tracking their stuff, right? So uh, all of those things are going to help push the large spread of it. But I think, you know, the nuts and bolts have to happen from us because we're cognizant of the nuts and bolts of the smaller people, right? We're like, you know, that's one view for a larger um, scale. And then on a, on a different scale, but still just as important is the peer to peer um, and, and getting that information across to others, you know, letting them know what it is. Right. Well, and I think there's like, I mean, referring to both of your guys' points, I think there's a really important thing to remember. And that's that none of this happens without all of this happening. You know, we can't, so we yeah. can have every, like us, we could be out there talking to people and spreading adoption and have everybody on the street with a Bitcoin wallet. You know, we could, we could find everybody that we could run into and get them a Bitcoin wallet and still not going to make a damn difference if nobody's building anything. But at the same right. time, that's exactly, I agree. If everybody, right, right, right. If everybody's building everything and we have the most amazing technology in the world, but nobody uses it, it doesn't fucking matter. So it's like, you got to have a little bit 
from every corner. And if you don't have the conventions out there pushing it to the people that are, that are there for the industry side of things, it's not going to work. You don't have consumers using it. It's not going to work. If nobody's accepting it as a payment. It's not going to work. And if nobody's building anything, then it sure as hell isn't going to work. So, you know, we all have to come together on that. And we all have to do our part. So maybe our part is building some stuff with the project that we're working on and also helping people learn about it. Maybe Truth Raiders part is working with the conventions to make sure that the, the big groups of people, you know, or the corporations that are attending these conventions see their side of it. So true. everybody's yeah. right. I, we, all, we all need to work together on it. So yeah, to clarify, I'm not, I'm, I'm like you guys, I'm an educator too. I help educate people, but I guess, I guess maybe I missed some. My point was that we have users, we got people like us that understand it. What we don't have is we don't have large, giant corporations, governments, um, and doing industries the that, doing the same thing. So that's my point. So I agree with right, you, right, all right. of you guys. Yeah. Like yeah, we, exactly. we need to, we personally need to push it. I, and I need to push it. I'm not negating my responsibility since I know what it is. I'm just saying that somehow we, <laughs> right. haven't, we, haven't, we haven't convinced everybody yet that we haven't convinced. Industry. No, we haven't. And you're, you're absolutely right. Because obviously when you hear a set of words and they come from an individual or you hear a set of words that come from a large, big ass corporation, the, the ones typically that come from that large big ads corporation are going to have more weight or more reach than, than the smaller individual. So, yeah, I, I think the professor hit it all on, right on the head as far as everything being cognizant of the other, everything needing the other to, to be a complete system. Um, I'm just, I, it was not a, it was, yeah, it was, it was a good conversation. I, I enjoyed that, you know, and because you have to see things from other people's view. You know, that doesn't make me right or you right or me wrong and you wrong. It means that we have different sets of eyes looking at it from different perspectives. And that's the important yeah. part is that we can see through the other person's eyes, their perspective, explain ours. And then if there's, you know, misunderstandings, we come to that agreement between the two. Right. That's that's the beauty of of uh, solid conversation. Yeah. So, no, that's that's what I said. We're all educators. You know, and education goes a lot. Of right. Time. You have to educate everybody. You know, we do a good job at educating, you know, the the people and, and just like Truth Raider does. But then there's also the, like, he's, you know, the education of the corporations and the education of uh, the bigger picture. You know, it's it's not just so. So it's all important. It's all amazing. But we could talk yeah. about this for hours. So I'm going to, uh, I'm kind of, <laughs> um, Truth Raider, you said that earlier that your views on Bitcoin have changed drastically this year. Um, on Twitter and there's some pictures of wallets and things like that. In what, in what way has your views changed and what does that have to do with wallets? Yeah. I mean, my big thing right now is I think that, you know, my focus right now is again, um, the conventions, but it's also security. I think that we, we have to, we have to focus. I'm a libertarian too. So I, I believe in my own, I believe in the right for myself to self govern, <laughs> you know? So right. I see a lot of people complain about centralized exchanges and, and centralization. And, and that's why I preach the hardware wallets. That's why I preach DEXs. Um, that's why I preach keeping your money outside other people's hands, um, keeping your crypto off. off uh, Cause what happens is when you transfer Bitcoin to, to a, uh, an exchange wallet, you're giving up custody of your Bitcoin or crypto pick, you know, pick an altcoin. You're doing the same thing. So, my biggest thing in 2019 is teaching people that, hey, you need to take care of yourself in this industry uh, because everybody's trying to take your crypto away, <laughs> you know, right. and, and focus um, and just focus more on uh, you know, prioritizing what's important to you in this space. Because last year was a free for all. That's that's just my perspective. I think you got to be more focused in 2019. Yeah, you know? that's a really good point. It's, it's something that people don't think about enough. Yeah. You know? Is there any particular security things in crypto that you think need the most attention right now? The biggest thing people don't understand is uh, there's this something called a SIM card swap where people can get access to your cell phone um, remotely and take your Bitcoin. It happened to one of my friends from Oregon. Um, he lost like nine Bitcoin uh, out of his uh, software wallet. So I always tell people like the, the way I, I do things and people can hack my phone right now if they want. All they're going to get is very little because what I use software wallets for is transacting. I use it as a transaction for uh, moving money around. 
um, and move in crypto, but I, I use hardware wallets, many of them, to actually physically store Bitcoin. And I preach that because people think that if they have their BTC on their software wallet, it's safe. And they are completely mistaken. And uh, it's very easy to prove them wrong on that. It's one of those yeah. things that I think it's I think it's a really good point that people should be focusing more on keeping their funds on a on a hardware wallet or at least some sort of a disconnected device. I mean, the, the overall message message I give is just don't be a victim. I mean, <laughs> there's yeah. enough case studies. There's enough case studies in centralized exchanges and wall software wallets um, that you can read on the internet to, to convince you to spend the ninety bucks on a ledger. You know, it's worth the money. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, risk risk uh, assessment, right? <laughs> you know, ninety dollars is a is a small price to pay if you're going to lose yeah, all your assets. You know, so do it. You it's just do finding it. one that's it's finding one that's efficient, easy to use. You know, stuff like that. And I I have a uh, a a nano, and I'm looking I'm looking at a, a couple other devices myself this uh this week coming up next actually, um when I go to St. Louis, so I'm looking forward to. Getting a couple I'm a, of I'm a, hardware wallet. I'm a Trezor guy, man. I'm a I'm a diehard believer in Trezor. It's my number one. Uh, I have a bunch of them. Uh, I have basically every hardware wallet on the market right now, but Trezor's the go-to right now. That's that's my favorite. Lezer's my Tron wallet. I use it for Tron because it's very convenient with the, everything they got going on. But Trezor is my that that's the best wallet on the market. I think. What do you? No, what never, are your views on Ellie, pal? I have that one too, but I don't use it. I don't really like it so much. But no? um, it, what are your, it works. What are the negatives you see with it? I, I'm I'm looking at it. That's why I'm asking. There's <laughs> nothing negative with it. It's a great wallet. It does everything it's supposed to do. I just um, I just really like Trezor's the, the functionality, the the ability for Trezor to connect to different exchanges, the ability to it, 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 uh, it's a multi sig signature verification when you transact. So you have to do you have to basically uh, more than a ledger doesn't it's not multi-sig where a treasure no. is so it's it's a little bit more secure than a ledger um, although ledger would disagree with what i just said <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think the 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 it's just so much easier to use a treasure i mean i'm a, I'm a diehard treasure fan since since day one and i i've got all the wallets i use them i i just use treasure and ledger probably the most you know, Trezor is, I haven't, I haven't actually tried one. Uh, I got Ledger because they, the white paper edition, the Satoshi edition, and it was just cool. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to get this one. I, I was probably, you know, one of those spur of the moment decisions, but like, yeah, it, it prompted me to buy one. I had to do it. So I've got my little fancy pretty Ledger, but uh, I've heard so many good things about Trezor and I've always been tempted to get one. And I actually almost, I, I was going back and forth between that and Ledger when I first picked it out. and. Uh, so I think based on what you just said, I'm going to have to get one and at least give it a shot and try it out and see how I like it. Well, you could, they got two models. The, 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 the Trezor Model 1 is pretty cheap now. It's pretty it's discounted. And then they got the Trezor Model um, T. I would just pick up a Trezor Model 1 because they're inexpensive. And uh, they're, they're very easy to use. Nice. Good to play with anyway, for sure. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to open up a rabbit hole here, probably that I maybe shouldn't open up, but uh, hopefully it's a show. Tell me how, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, honestly, this is one of those rabbit holes that could be extremely not shallow. So we will oh, see. Uh, but I would yeah. like to know your uh, thoughts behind how Orwell's 1984 uh, is currently the society that we're actually living in. I think uh, just to look externally, I, I, I watched on Twitter today a uh, video. <laughs> From Hong Kong, where a bunch of like five thousand protesters were singing "Less Miserables" from the musical on the streets, so it doesn't take much to see that there's a lot going on in the world, you know. <laughs> and it's kind of crazy. You know? It's getting crazy. Yeah, I think uh, you know Bitcoin plays right into that concept of of being able to liberate yourself or have something that is quote unquote untouchable in a way. I mean, we talked pretty in depth with uh, Albie yesterday about governments stepping in um putting their fingers on your money and that kind of stuff and what bitcoin what, you know what bitcoin can and can't do in preventing that you know so it'll be interesting to see we're, we're in a crazy world there's a lot of weird shit going on um having a global currency that can be used by anybody at any time can be an extremely valuable thing i think at the end of the day uh we're all it's all it's going to work out because people um 
people are going to back back it because it's easy you know like right now they don't understand it but i think once like think about a few years ago could you even really use uh btc on a phone was it really that simple no i mean like now it's like super easy there's like a, dozens of wallets um same with all coins you couldn't find most all coins on a wallet three years ago <laughs> so right exactly so I think the, the the easier it becomes, the less controversial it'll be. I guess that that's kind of my response to the 1984 side is right now it's controversial only because it's misunderstood. That that would be my argument to that. That's a really good point. I, I kind of like the way you put that actually. So so Truth Raider, what's your favorite type of sandwich? <laughs> tuna probably. Definitely tuna. Yeah. Tuna fish on what? On rye? Tuna on rye? You like a tuna on tuna. rye? <laughs> tuna on parmesan. On rye? <laughs> there we go. Oh my goodness. Nice. Oh, I I like tuna fish sandwiches, especially like with a slab of tomato, maybe some lettuce, you know, some exactly. salt and pepper. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Cool. Maybe even what? lightly toast the bread on the rye. Yeah, we're in. <laughs> What's your guys' big all coin play? What are you guys into? What's the the professor looking at uh you know my altcoins are so spread out that like you know I don't, there's not really one that i think is going to be the king necessarily per se because you know, you know like we talked about there's so many different use cases but i have there's a lot that i am really interested in so i, I like xrp i'm not I, i'm putting that first because i've already talked about it like not like that's my favorite coin by any stretch of the imagination but it serves a really good purpose it has a use case it has nothing to do with you know, abandoning governments or anything like that stuff. It's just a, it's, it's just a good fast coin for large institutions to use to transfer money. That doesn't make it necessarily a good investment, but I think it's a really cool use case that uh, ha has a purpose and is going to be a good project, regardless of whether you're going to yeah. money on it. What I really love right now, and I talk about this all the time, but any type of microtransactional type of coin, like uh, Brave Browser and the Bat Token, uh, the ability to have funds transfer between advertisers and content creators seamlessly is a huge thing. And it doesn't just apply to content creation, but the concept of microtransactions go really deep, whether it's, you know, AI stuff, machine to machine transactions, things like that. It, it opens up a new ability, I guess, for machines and software to interact. I think that's going to be a massive step moving forward just as a backbone of what the future brings. Yeah, I've looked in, I have a little bit of bat and I, I've, uh i like what brave's doing although i don't use the browser yet right but yes and, and i wouldn't say necessarily like, like bat is the future at all but I, i'm referring more to like that type of use case you know like the the micro transaction micro transaction whether it's that's bat, I mean, bats doing a specific type of that right for for yeah. browsers and that type of stuff and then there's things like beats coin which they're doing another specific type of that but there's uh so many different types of this sort of utility that it's hard to narrow it down to like a specific coin because there's a lot of uh, really good potential applications for microtransactions that don't even exist yet. So um, I think any coin that's that's focused on microtransactions is going to be a really good play in the future, just, just like I do um, any coin that's focused on privacy and is doing a good job at that. If privacy coins are going to be huge. Uh, like we talked on last episode, the concept of a privacy coin is important like you know we're, we can't we can't hide from taxes you can't get away from that you're not necessarily going to be totally anonymous um but just the idea of having a coin where maybe your entire spending history is not totally public you know you're gonna have to pay taxes on your shit that's just what it is but at the same time maybe it's nice to have something that's not totally open and, and available for anybody to see anytime they want i agree it's true so Mitch, what's uh what are your favorite alts right now? My favorite? I don't know. There's so many. <laughs> There's just so many. I'm into, I like, I got a lot of BTT, BitTorrent. I have. That's another good microtransaction one, by the way. Bat token. I have the, the list is incredible. A lot of Zaligua. I'm into Zill. Um, I like, I like Vet V Chain. I think. I think VET is going to be um, a great uh, entity when it when it actually does it finishes its uh, its setup. Um, and then I like um, Sky Token, pretty big on that. I I, I have a smorgasbord of of uh, 
of tokens, right? I, I mean, I if you walked into a buffet and looked at how many you had to choose from, that's kind of like looking at my portfolio. I, I, I have a lot of tokens and they're spread out. And But when you look at it, when you look at it and you say, oh, wow, you know, when you look at the projects that, that, that I'm holding, you're like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard to choose which ones to get rid of because I really don't have shit shit coins right I, I have decent altcoins so you know I, I i try not to be emotional about it i'm trying to consolidate and get all of my holdings ultimately into bitcoin and litecoin um and i have some verge you know so xrp of course i mean i think just about everybody's holding some xrp waiting for the big the big move but um but yeah so that's pretty much where i'm at and like i said trying to consolidate so as they come back into profits then i'm slowly you know dwindling down my overall supply <laughs> as far as the spread yeah definitely well i mean i love i've got so many different altcoins i i kind of almost forgot like some of my old school favorites because i'm kind of looking at some of the new stuff now but like poet is a massive one for me they're doing such cool shit with trying to allow people to stamp their works to the blockchain their creative works and essentially creating a form of uh unmanipulatable copyright on the blockchain um tron is yeah, there's so many people love to hate on tron you know i get it but there's no you can't argue with how much they've built in the past two years so you know th i think those are two of my old standbys that that i definitely have pretty big bags of right now that i i don't really want to get rid of i think there's some pretty cool potential for those guys too i think if i had a stack um, everything I'm holding right now, I'd say it probably would be BTC, obviously one, and then number two would probably be my second favorite is MTC, and then my third is probably going to be Tron. If I had to stack what projects I believe are going to be here ten years from now, those are probably the three. I mean, I think that's a pretty good set of bags, if we're honest. Yeah, I think you're. Gonna I mean, be I've got ten years. You guys, you guys, uh, have you seen MTC? Have you looked at that one at all? You know, I, I mean, other than trading it once or twice on an exchange just because it was there and the chart looked good, I really haven't looked into the projects itself. I don't know. It's, uh, the reason why I think it's good is they've already got a product that works. Um, basically, what it is is you can bring, a, you can talk to a doctor or a psychiatrist over the phone um, from your smartphone. It's kind of like the way I describe MTC is it's basically like the, the Uber of uh, the Uber of healthcare. Just imagine you're going to get an Uber ride. You use your phone. It's kind of the same with these guys. Like you talk to your, you need to talk to your doctor or your psychologist or whatever. You just, you, you call them directly and you can video conference immediately. Okay. Um, so it's kind of like, uh, like doc, I mean, doc academic is the first one that pops in my head just cause that's them. Oh, that's, that's them. They, yeah. They rebranded to, uh, Oh, okay. They, they rebranded to doc doc.com is the new, um, nice. rebrand. So, so yeah. the last the last question of the evening we're gonna or of the day we're gonna we're gonna kind of get this wrapped up um so but the last question that, that i have for you sir is if you could remove one body part and do something with it what would you remove and what would you do with it what am i what do i have what am i trying to do with it what's the, the goal whatever you want i mean i would <laughs> well, i would definitely want i could do with i would probably be the right arm because i need my left arm so okay and what would you do with that right arm once you removed it? <laughs> I'd probably feed it to I'd feed it to sharks probably just for fun. <laughs> would you? <laughs> That's fun. That's I'd amazing. remove my eyeball and leave it on the counter so I could watch everybody when I walked out of the room. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Oh I'm shit, not, man. It's been... up this morning. <laughs> where do you where do you live? Where are you from? I might have missed it if you I'm, said it earlier because I'm of, from uh, yeah. Washington State. Oh, nice. Washington State. Okay, cool. So you're you're over there on the west side of the country. So what's your next convention that you're going to go to? Um, I was going to go to Vienna, but I'm going to go to Malta now. The Malta is probably the next one. Vienna's too soon. It's in like October or some shit. Right on. So, right on. Cool. You got you to get down to LA for uh, Crypto Invest Summit. Coming up. Yeah. I want to go to Min mining disrupt is the one I want to go to as well in Miami. That's that's a pretty cool one. It's uh, it's mostly dealing with uh, Bitcoin mining companies, but that's yeah, that's I on my list. That. 
Or World Crypto Cons looks pretty good from uh, Vegas. That one looks good. I think going to the Crypto Invest Summit is going to be a big expansion for us. I think so. We're going to, cool. I don't know if you've caught that or not yet, Street Trader, but we got, uh, we're doing a live podcast at Crypto Invest Summit. Uh, that's in October in Los Angeles. So if you know anybody in that area, send them down. We'll say hi. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool, man. I heard that's a pretty big one. Yeah, it's supposed to be fun. Uh, along Gorn is running it. Steve Wozniak spoke at it last year, which was pretty interesting. I'd, I'd love the opportunity to, to pick his brain for a minute because talking about smart guys, I mean, the Woz, man, he's got a brilliant mind for sure. So Exactly, man. Well, sweet, man. It's been an amazing time. I'm glad we had you on the show. I can't believe it's been an hour already. <laughs> he's like what we're not <laughs> already it's new my time already but we're gonna yeah. have to have a we're gonna schedule part two i think there's a lot more we could talk about so one of these days we'll uh we'll make a second one happen and uh maybe we can meet up at a conference one of these days there you go for sure man that'd be yeah. awesome thanks Thank for coming on the show brother yeah thanks guys take care all right you too bye-bye well, that was really cool having him on the show he's uh he's got some interesting perspective and i thought we were gonna get more Bitcoin maximalism happening, and I'm kind of glad we didn't because uh, I wasn't sure where we were going to go. We we like to talk about shit coins a lot, so I'm yeah. not sure if we we're going to have to talk about Bitcoin this whole time or not, or if we we're going to have to come up with some stuff. So, yeah, no, it was, I, you know, a lot of the stuff it was something I had never heard before. So, I mean, from that standpoint, it was it was really good, you know, to hear new perspectives on things. Um, you know, I my mind's racing today. I'm I'm in and out and I have, uh, uh, you know, I'm getting a lot of stuff done over this weekend. It's been a busy morning and I think it's about time to have a beer, have a cup of coffee. Yeah. And oh, beer. I mean, I'll come down with beer. It's five o'clock somewhere. Hey, it's, it's, it is five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Exactly. Well, that was cool, a good one. man. It was a good one. Yeah, it was. It was definitely a good one. I, I enjoy all of them. I don't think we've ever done one that I really, well, there was only one that I really didn't care for, but I still enjoyed it. Uh, that was a long time ago. So no, I, I think things are, things are moving along pretty well and yeah, it's going to be a great week. I'm fired up. Oh yeah. Now, now we need to go get our heads spun up because they're not working right now. So no, they're not. <laughs> they're definitely not. They're not it's it's awesome. like we're here, but we're not a hundred percent. There's no question about no. it. It's Sunday. And it's tough to, you know, it's tough to do back to backs for sure. Number one. Yeah. And it's back tough to, backs to do them on Sunday. Or back to back and editing. And then all of a sudden your wife comes in. And she's like, you have a podcast in 10 minutes. I'm like, I know, I know. I'm trying to finish oh my God. episode. Hang on. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you fire up your computer, then your audio is not working. Yeah. But, you know, ah, you know scramble months, mode. That's the beautiful thing <laughs> about this podcast is it's not, it's low stress. You know, if something goes wrong, it's yeah. okay. No, it's not a big deal. It's, it is what it is. That's right. It started because of a technical problem. Whatever. If it takes an extra couple of days to get the podcast released because of whatever reason, whatever. It's okay. You know, it's a it's a low stress. It's just it's just for fun. We're having a good time. So you know. Oh yeah. Um, I love and it. If my love boss it. fires me because I spent too long on my podcast and didn't work long enough on his stuff, oh well. Oh well. <laughs> you, you, That's you right. Clint's house and build shit. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys, you have a great day. Enjoy the show. Hope you hope you had fun and uh, look forward to the next ones that come your way. You guys have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. You guys take it easy.